word with us and give us a, a, what God has given him for us tonight. So you welcome him tonight, and we just thank the Lord for Brother Derek. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Yeah, here we go. How y'all doing tonight? Amen. How y'all doing tonight? Amen. Amen. God is good. I mean, I, I just realized that, I mean, like, God is good all the time. All the time. Amen. God, God is, is good. good. Amen. Before I get into the word, I'm going to go ahead and declare the word. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 2.15, it's study to show thyself approved. A workman needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So when you know it, you live it, and you apply it. Amen. And uh, this message that God has given me, I actually wrestle with it. It's like sometimes you you have this, you know, you have this message over here that you're preparing, and you're like, yes, I'm about to get him with this one. But God told me to ball that message up and throw it in the trash, and I got something new for you. <laughs> and after, after realizing that, I was like, Lord, the message that I was going to preach was going to be on time. It was going to be one of those words that's going to be a shouting message. But he's like, I'm not looking for shouting messages. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for life application. I'm looking for life changing. And I want you to be obedient. See, I had a conversation with a friend of mine, and he was asking me, like, why is this walk with God so hard? Why is it so hard? Why come every time he asks me to do something, I can't seem to do it? Well, I, I, I replied and said, it's not hard when you're obedient. It's not hard when you're obedient. Because for me, sometimes there, there's a struggle. But the times that I'm being obedient to his word and to his will, that's when the walk becomes easier. On, it becomes amen. it becomes amen. where I'm less stagnant. Come on, amen. And so I asked him another question. I said, "What is your motivation? Mm. What is your motivation for obeying him?" And that's the message title on tonight is, "What is your motivation to obey God? Mm. Come on. Come on. What motivates you?" James 4 and 3 talks about, when it gets on the screen, ye ask and receive not, but ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lust. Now, sometimes when we're asking God for something, we have this, is this motivation. What is your motivation for obedience? Most of the time, I realized in the past that I used to have this bargain with God. Like, if, if I do this, Lord, you would do this. But the intent of my heart was wrong. Because, you know, I received, see, I asked it and I received not. And I was like, God, I'm doing everything that you want me to do. But my, the intent of my heart was wrong. My motivation was wrong. Come on, that's good. Like, I would sit there and try to ask God to bless me with different finances, but I would just give, but I would give out of a wrong motivation. I would say, Lord, you're going to go ahead and bless me with a million dollars, so I'm going to just go ahead and give, 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 but I had the wrong intent of my heart. I was doing it just to try to get and not look at it as a blessing to someone else. Come on, come on. Come on. So that's what motivated me to Give to bless someone else, to bless his kingdom, to bless the people of God. Amen. And see, that's when my mind frame has switched. And then I realized out of Hebrews 4 and 12 that his word is that powerful. His word is that powerful. When I really got into his word, it, it, it pierced my heart. For the word of God is quick and powerful. Sharpening any double-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow. And watch this part. It is a discerner of thoughts and intent of the heart. Yep. Man. Come on. The key word is a discerner of thoughts and intent of the heart. Oh, so in good. order to stay motivated to really obey God, you have to have a, a heart out for him. 
Just like the Bible says that they was a man after God's own heart. You must have a right heart to be motivated for his obedience. Because a lot, of, a lot of times we just, when we bargain with him, we try to do something that satisfies our flesh, just like it says in the book of James. We will satisfy our flesh and not be thinking about blessing someone else or also blessing his kingdom. And Come after on. really going through that and explaining that to my, a friend of mine, he really changed his mind on how he is motivated for obedience when it comes to when God is telling him something or God is prompting him to Come do on. something that's, that's going to be beneficial for his will. Yes. Amen. See, you got to make sure that the intent of your heart lines up with the will of God. Amen. You have to. Because I realized that the times that I was not following the will of God and I had the wrong intent, everything went south. Like, I didn't receive anything and was wondering why. Like, most of the times, a lot of people stray away from the faith because they don't see the benefits right away because they had the wrong motive on what they was doing. And so many people that I know that just straight away, they say, well, this Christian thing is so hard. This believing God is so hard. I might as well quit and not just deal with it anymore because this life in God is so hard. All you have to do is be obedient. Amen. And sometimes we don't. And sometimes we can think it's hard, but it's for the good of his will. Amen. And I'm going to give you six reasons to obey God. Six reasons. I know it's more than that. But I'm going to give you the top, six, the top six reasons that God had given me to obey him. One, love motivates. Amen. Come on. Love motivates. What it talks about in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, whoever believed in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Key word, for God so loved the world. We should love, just like he loves us, we should love him back. Love motivates. And see, he loved me so much that even when I fell down, he still picked me back up. Yes, he he still got me on the right track. Amen. And see, that, that's, that's true love. Because most of the times, us as humans, if somebody messes us over, guess what? We ready to kick them out of the family. We ready to kick them to the side. We ready to say, you know what? Let the world deal with you. But God love is not like that. And we should love him the same way that he loves us. Because his love is unconditional. It's a God love. Come as he said, on, that's good. It's that kind of love that's that good, compels right? us that's to nice. obey him. Even though we might see, when I see the outcome of it, but we still obey him anyway because we love him that much. Come on, that's good. Love motivates. Yes, sir. I remember it was uh, times where I was just really trying to find my identity. And next thing you know, I just had people just come and saying, yo, I love you. I was like, love? What you love me for? I don't even know you. Why, why are you saying you loving me? But that's how God brought me in. He brought me into people that's showing genuine love. And now, since I've seen genuine love through people, that's God's way of saying, I love you just the same. Amen. And then that motivates me to when, to when he tells me to do something, I do it not just out of obligation, but because of the love I have for him, because of the love that he had for me first. Amen. Two, sin is destructive. And before, and before I get into that one, I'm going to go to 2 Corinthians 5, 14 through 15. Because I just got off track. <laughs> For the love of Christ constrained us because the judge that if one died for all, that we are all dead. That all he died for all that which, which live shall not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Think about it. Christ died for us, and that was true love. That, that's true love. Now think about it. He, all powerful, he could have just came down and said, you know what? These people are getting on my nerves, just wiping them all out. 
at the cross, he could have sent legions of angels to kill all of them, to just wipe them out. But he thought about love. He thought about the people being reconciled with the Father. That's what motivated him to keep on going through the persecution, to keep on getting beating, to keep on moving forward because it was in his father's will. Because Jesus was all about his father's business. And that's the love that we should have toward him because he loves us that much. Now, number two, sin is destructive. Whoo! I realize that sin will cost you a lot more than what you can pay. That's right. I realize that. This might sound crazy, but I saw a post on Facebook. Somebody said, if you're looking at these $7 sundresses, don't cause you to have $7,000 in child support. Think about it. You look, you look, the lust of your eyes is looking at these $7 sundresses will have you $7,000 in child support. <laughs> See, sin will cost you more than what you want to pay. A lot, of, a lot of people just think, okay, well, he looks good, she looks good, ain't nothing wrong with it. I'm just looking. Well, you got to be able to think about that. It said he who finds a wife finds a good thing. That's right. Not a person that you lust after because that will cause you to have a soul tie. All right. So sin is destructive. I'm noting, I'm noting in my life that sin costs me a lot. Because of disobedience. And see, sin don't care how far it takes you. Like, sin will knock you all the way into the ground and then look at you and laugh at you. Right. Sin, on, sin does not care. Right. Sin does not care what your name is. Sin does not care what your title is. You can be the greatest of all time. Sin comes to the door and be like, I don't care who you are, I'm about to destroy you. The Bible says that the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus said, I come to give you life in that more abundantly. The first part is that the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. That's exactly how sin is when you disobey God. So once you recognize that sin is destructive and that sin will take you out quicker than you can make your head spin, you will realize that obeying God is better than the cost of sin. That's right. That's right. Amen. Out of Galatians 6, 7 through 8. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man soweth, that he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall not of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap Everlasting life. Everlasting life. When you realize that sin is destructive, it can cause your flesh to be so corrupted, sometimes you won't even realize it. There's there's been times where a person can be dealing with an issue that's been going on for 10 to 15 to 20 years, and they realize they cannot shake it because of the fact that they let their flesh corrupt. They let the flesh corrupt their mind, their thought process. And pretty much, you you always got this this devil and the angel right on the side, and they talking to you. You got the the devil saying that, what you want to try to go to church for? Because you can't get over this. You've been dealing dealing with this for 10 to 15 to 20 years. Then you have the angel on the side saying, "Uh, you can't get out of here. But then sometimes when your flesh is corrupted and does not have the word in there, guess what? You're going to listen to the voice that sounds pleasing because the voice that sounds pleasing is going to be the one that sounds pleasing to the flesh and not the one that is good for you. That's not going to be that's going to be the one for the spirit. So you got to be able to discern whether it is yourself, the flesh or is God, the spirit. So sin is destructive. And I realize in my own life that. The times that when I allow that sin to rise up, it knocked me down so fast. And I'm just being honest. 
It's been times where God has prompted me to do something and I felt that I wasn't worthy. I would talk myself out of it because I would think about the act that I did the night before and just say, you know what? I don't think I'm worthy enough to do anything for God. Sometimes when you allow that sin to get so destructive in your life, it will literally kill, steal, and destroy you. You will mess around and not be getting up to pray in the morning. You will just sleep and, and just not honor God in the time that he wants you to honor God, just like you did before. All of a sudden, you will not be witnessing at work like you used to. All of a sudden, you will start feeling depressed and you will start feeling anxiety attacks all the time. That's how. That's because that sin has really corrupted your flesh to the point that where it just destroyed you. And when you realize that sin is destructive, you will be motivated to obey God. And that's another reason. Three, discipline from the Father. Most of the times, we look at God as merciful, in which he is. He is merciful. He gives us grace and he gives us mercy on a day-to-day -day basis. Come on. We, we also got to realize that he is our father and he's also a judge as well. Like you think about it. If you didn't discipline your kids, what would happen? They wouldn't know right from wrong. They wouldn't know the action that they did was wrong. If they run, if they run for instance, they running around church and you tell them to stop that or you don't do nothing at all, they're just going to keep on doing it because in their mind it is right. It is right for them to keep on messing around with the things that's going on in their life that is not of God or keep dipping and dabbing into situations which you told them that it's going to mess them up. But they do it anyway if you don't discipline them. So discipline from the Father will help you to really motivate. Not in a, not in a way where you're scared of them, but in a way where you respect them. When you when something arises up that tries to take you down, you would think about, okay, you know what? This is not going to be pleasing to the Father, and I know that I'm going to get a conviction after I do this, so I'm going to go ahead and move away from that. So that's the thing we got to realize. Like, God is merciful, and he's a judge as well. Most of the people get the impression that God is just going to give all grace, which he does, but he also disciplines those ones that he loves Amen. as well. Amen. Hebrews 12, 5 through 8. And this pretty much explains it. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son despise not though the chastening of the Lord nor faint when there are rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chastens and scorches every son whom he receives. Verse 7. If you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. And with son he is whom the father chastens not. Verse 8. If you are not disciplined and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are illegitimate children and not true sons. Come on. That's good preaching right there. You are not true sons. If the father did not discipline you, you are not true sons. He chastens the ones that he loves. Like if I didn't love you, I would not be able, I would not discipline you. I gotta be able to show you what you're doing is wrong. And it's not pleasing to his sight. That's exactly where we have to get that mentality. Because just like, just like when I was younger, if I did something, my dad would whoop me. He would, and then he would say these words. It hurt you. It might hurt me more than it hurt you. And I'm thinking like, how can it hurt you? <laughs> I'm the one that's getting the whooping. But I realized that the discipline I got from my father Help me in the long run. Amen. So for when I'm thinking about doing something crazy, I would think about my dad's voice. <laughs> Boy, don't you do that. And then all of a sudden you'd be like, okay. That's how we got to be in the kingdom. We have to be like that. 
when God has prompted us, he uses us holy, he uses the Holy Spirit to tell us, hey, you're doing wrong. Right. See, the Holy Spirit is a comforter, but he also judges unrighteousness. That's what the word says. Come on. He's come to comfort you and to show you that you have assurance that you are of God. But also, when you're doing wrong, he will chastise you. He will show you and say, hey, you, you're doing wrong. What, what you doing over there? You smoking. And you just said, you just made a promise that you was going to quit today. If you're over there and you're trying to drink all the time and you promised that you was going to do that and that's when you get that conviction and a lot of people twist that conviction and think it's condemnation Romans 8 and 1 says that there's no condemnation in Christ the thing is sometimes we can condemn ourselves no one is condemning us no one is telling us anything but we condemn ourselves and we put ourselves Low, we put ourselves below, and God is like, I'm just trying to help you. I'm trying to help you build up and not keep falling for that things again, before that again. Because I realize that when God chastises us, it's for our good. It's for our good because He has a greater plan for us. That's been that's probably been many times where He has saved you from something. And he calls you to go the other direction. People might not have been able to understand that. People might yes. not have been un able to understand your change. And why are you walking away from this? Because we're having so much fun. <laughs> they don't understand it. But God saved you from something because his will is perfect. His will is perfect. By the fact, uh, get Romans... 12 and 2. God, the Spirit of the Lord just dropped that in my spirit just now. Romans 12, 2. And this is just really talking about the Father's will. And do and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So ye may prove what is that good and acceptable, perfect. Good. Keyword, perfect will of God. Come on, that's the good. The perfect that's good. That's good. will of God. Man, when he chastises us, it is for our good and it's for his perfect Come on. will. Amen. And see, if a person, if he saved you before, that means that he has a totally different plan for you. Amen. If he saved you before, that plan is for, for you to excel, to mount up like eagles and fly. I mean, just fly, just soar. That's the plans that they have for you. You might not see it right away, but that's exactly what the plans he have for you because his plan is acceptable and perfect. That's right. That's good. Amen. Number four, and I already touched on this before, God commands for us are good. His commands for us are good. Come on. Sometimes we don't think that if he wants us to help out somebody, for instance, we can see a person that's on the corner and that's, uh, that's asking for change or just needs a, a few dollars. Most of the times with so much things, so much going on in the world, we would tend to overlook that person because we, in our minds, we're like, he's just going to smoke it anyway. He's just going to drink it anyway. He's just going to do something negative anyway. But God tells us, but then most of the time we just give him, okay, we give him a dollar. We give him 50 cents. But what if there's a time where God told you to give him $10? Come on. And you have it. You have it to spare. Right. And you overlook because you're so blinded about what the way the world is. It's not your responsibility to, to think about that. It's your, your responsibility is to obey God. That's right. Don't worry That's about right. like if that. he does something Amen. negative or not. Because if God told you to do it, guess what? It's going to help the person. And also it's going to help you That's to right. be obedient to his word. Because yeah. God calls us to do little stuff. A lot, a lot of times that we look at that God wants us to be, do the big colossal, the grande stuff. He wants us to do everything so huge, but he wants us just to do the smallest right. thing. Right, the yeah. smallest. Come on. Now I was at uh, work the other day, and it was a lady. She's uh, 
she's at the she's one of the secretary at the First Baptist Church, and she was I was asking how I was doing like I was pretty much do everybody, and she said that her mom has a cancer, and I was like I I pray for you what what's her name she said her her name is uh Rain, and I was like okay so I'm walking I walk out I say have a nice day I walk to the elevator. And in my mind, as I'm walking to the elevator, God telling me to go back and pray. Amen. Go back and pray. I'm like, Lord, I'm in a rush. I have, to, I have to hurry up and go. And next thing you know, I clicked the elevator. He was like, go back and pray. Come on. Go back and pray. Amen. Next thing you know, I said, okay. I dropped my things. I went back and prayed. Because in my mind, I'm like, I'm in a rush. That's I'm not, I, I don't, I, I got to hurry up and get to this destination. But when I went back and prayed, God moved through me to where I touched on stuff that we didn't even have no conversation about. Amen. And God moved because Amen. of yes. obedience, because Amen. his commands is good. Just something simple. Amen. I, didn't Amen. Say no, I didn't say no big, long prayer. All I said was a few words. About healing, about restoration, about mending. That's all I said. And God did a mighty work in just a few words. Just because I obeyed him. Just that little bit. Sometimes we think that God, in order for us to really move, that we just got to get on the street corner. We got to get behind a pulpit. We got to do all of these grande things for God. And he just wants us to do the smallest things. He just, he just wants us to go to a person that's having a bad day and just say, hey, brother, it's going to be all right. That's all he wants us to do. That's all he wants us to do. He can say, I, no matter what you're going through, God is on your side. Come on. Amen. That's Amen. all he wants us to do. He can, he can just tell you just to say those few words. A lot of us want to go around and say a whole bunch of paragraphs. He can just tell you just to say, God is good. God loves you. God cares. Simple. Because his commands for us are just that good. Amen. The scripture in Deuteronomy 5, 5 and 29. Oh, yeah, there were such at heart in them that were, would fear me and keep all of my commandments always that it might be well with them and with their children forever. I'm going to read that again. Oh, that there were such an heart in them that they will fear me and keep my commandments always that it might be well with them and with their children forever. When you keep God's commandments, when, when he tells you to do something, when you, when, you, when you pretty much live by what he says, it will be well them. Amen. See, he was talking about the uh, children of Israel. And since since they were disobedient, they kept wandering around in circles for 40 years, which it only should have took 11 days. So he said, just listen to his commandments. Obey his commandments always. Amen. Not sometimes. Well, not maybe. Like not every other day. Not when you feel like it. But always. Well, and it will, it, it will be well with them and their children. Think about the obedience that you do right now will affect your children forever because it will go from generation of obedience to generation of, of, of obedience and then it's going to keep on passing down for your children forever. That's when we have to realize that one of the motivations to obeying God we must realize that his commands for us are good. Amen. And also, number six, our rewards, our obedience will be rewarded. Excuse me. Right. Our obedience will be rewarded. Matthew 7 and 7 says, Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock and the door will be open to you. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. And knock and the door will be open 
to you. Think about that. When you are in obedience with God, all you have to do is ask. You got to have that will lining up. When his will lines up and you ask him for anything, your obedience will be rewarded. Amen. It will be rewarded for you walking out his will, walking out his ways in the way that he wants you to go. Come on. Amen. It will be rewarded. Most of the times we we serve, we we help out in the church, we help out the poor, we help out the sick. And, and we don't think that we're being rewarded. We don't think that. We think that everything we do right now has to have an instant reward. Like we have some kind of, like we're in this microwave generation where everything has to be instant oatmeal, instant grits, instant anything. We think that when we do something for God that we have to have instant rewards. Sometimes the rewards can't come instant. Don't get me wrong, they can't come instant. But in other times, it can be a process. Like I preached last time about appreciating the process. When you're going through that process of getting to God's will, that's a process between those two. So we got to realize that our obedience will be rewarded soon enough. Then after it's rewarded, that's when we can come up freely to the throne Amen. and we can get on our knees, get on our face humbly and ask the Father for what's in his will. Come on. Amen. And see, number six, obedience is an opportunity to honor God. Come it's on. an opportunity to honor God. How we do that? By our lifestyles. We honor him by our lifestyles, by the way we live. And also, when we honor him and help others get saved. Right. You know how many people have came to you and say, I don't know what it is about you, but that's something about you that just draws me to you. Amen. That's Amen. something about you. Oh. It's the lifestyle. It's the lifestyle that you live. When you're living for God, it draws people, just like a moth to a flame. Like, it's funny, like, I can be at night, it'd be nighttime, and if I flip on one of those lights, they see no moths is flying to it. It's attracting to the light. So you know, the Bible talks about us being the, the light of the salt of the world. So with that kind of light, that means that unbelievers, people that don't believe in God, people that believe in different religions and all of that stuff, they should be drawing to us. Because we live that lifestyle that is holy. Not perfect, but it's holy unto God. Good, amen. So amen. When, when people draw to us like that, that's when we have the opportunity to honor God. Amen. And we can honor him by helping those that are lost. And helping those that are confused. Helping those that are going down the wrong path and they seem like they don't have a way to get out. Helping those to get back on the right path. That's the opportunity to witness. That's the opportunity to share God's love, his wisdom, and his knowledge, and how, just like he just like said in the uh, song, Amazing Grace, save a rich like me. Yeah. That's the opportunity. On, and we don't take that lightly. Because what if I'd have missed out on the opportunity to not pray for that lady? God, that could have been something that she was really depressed about. And just because I was obedient, it broke something in her. And see, in my job, you do something like that, you know, they're like, what you doing that for? But I have to obey God. That's right. Amen. Come on, that's When good. you obey God, you don't care about yes. the persecution. Amen. Amen. You don't care about if somebody that's comes good. and calls the office and say, well, that mailman was over there praying for them. Like, hey, I'm doing what God calls me to do. And guess what? He will shield and guide me the whole way. Now, if I'd have been disobedient, it would have been worse. It could have been worse. I mean, we never know what could have went through that, that lady's mind if I did not pray with her for oh, God to move and to help her while her mom is going through that sickness. Amen. Because of sheer obedience, 
God was able to move and there was an opportunity for me to minister to her. Even though she worked in a church, sometimes we can be working in church, we can be so busy for God that we need to help ourselves. Right. We can right. and we can just call on him and he would send people away because she was also she was obviously praying because God would have never prompted me if she was out not praying for some for God to move in her life and to give her peace and joy of the situation that she was dealing with. So right. God answered her prayer just by me being obedient to his word and when he told me to pray for that lady. Come on. That's good. That's the lifestyle. That's the lifestyle that I live. And that's the lifestyle we shall all live. Not a perfect lifestyle, but a lifestyle that is pleasing to him. Oh, yes, we're going to fall down all the time. Oh, yes, we're going to make mistakes. Oh, yes, we're going to come up short. But guess what? When we come up short, God will come and make up the difference. Come on. You might stop right here and God is like, okay, that's where I want you to be. And I will meet you halfway. Draw unto me. That's, good. That's, That's good. what he says. He, when you draw to him, he will draw right back unto you, right back. So he will meet you right in the middle if you have to. Even if you only went two steps, he said, you know what? I'm going to meet you right where you at. I'm going to meet you right where you at. And that comes by being obedient to God. Amen. Obedience. Amen. Motivation for obedience. You also got to remember that people are watching you. You got to remember that people are watching you. Like, I done had many times where people was looking for me to fail. I would be in the situation, and they would be like, okay, is he going to do this, or he's going to turn around? It's been times where I've been around friends of mine from high school and everything, and they're drinking and all that, and they looking for me to say, oh, let me go ahead and get a drink from that, too, or let me go ahead and get a smoke from that, too. But when I tell them that I don't smoke no more, that God took that taste out of my mouth in 2013 at Wilmot Apartments over there in, in Fort Worth, Texas, and I meant that. When he, when he took the taste out of my mouth, I didn't go back to that no more. So if I'm around them and they doing their smoking, I'm walking away or I'm talking to them. Or the, the anointing of God will be so strong to where they say, you know what, I don't want to do that around you. Because I respect you. That's how much of a lifestyle you have to live to where people see that glory, that anointing. They say, you know what, I'm not going to do that around you like that because, man, I respect you. And then next thing you know, they're going to have questions on how can I be that same way because I'm trying to stop smoking. I'm trying to stop drinking hard. I'm trying to stop clubbing. I'm, I'm tired of doing this mediocre life. I want to start living an awesome life with God now. Just by living that lifestyle. Just by living a lifestyle. Simple. Simple instructions that God gives us to do. But sometimes we can't do it. It's all about obedience. And here's a quote. When we, when we, lead, when we obey the Lord, I mean, when we don't obey, obey the Lord, it ceases to be a burden. But obedience becomes a delight. Let me say it again. When we don't obey the Lord, obedience ceases to be, ceases to be a burden. But when we obey the Lord, it becomes a delight. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we think that God plans for us, it, it comes a burden. Like we can't do this. That it's so heavy to try to live right. To try to do try to do the best that we can in this life. We think it's a it's a burden. That it's gonna it's gonna pull us down just that hard. That it's gonna weigh us down. We realize that God has the strength of everything. He can lift that burden up. And when you obey him, it becomes delight. Amen. It's like a breath of fresh air. It's just like when you confessing something to someone or to God, just like it says in the book of James, he will give you healing. You confess your sins to God, you will be forgiven. When you confess your sins to one another, you will be healed. That's, that's how it is when you are obedient to God. It's a delight. It's like a breath of fresh air. Amen. So motivation Amen. for obedience. So I pray that what I said tonight minister to your hearts. Amen. That it will prompt you to when God is telling you to do something, you will obey. You will not second guess it. You will not sit around and debate on it. That you will go full-fledged 
It lines up with his word. It lines up with his will. And you will go forth with it. Let us pray. Father God, I just thank you for this time we had in your presence, Lord God. That we fellowshiped around your word, Lord God. Bringing clarity, Lord God. That no matter what, that we would choose to obey you. Because we see you as Father. We call you Abba, Lord God. And as we bring forth the word this week, Lord God, help us, guide us, lead us into all truth, Lord God. And Father God, anything we have done, Lord God, forgive us for our sins, seen and unseen, knowing and unknowing, Lord God. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness, infuse your righteousness in us, Lord God, so we may walk out your perfect will and do the best that we can to obey you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.